So we'll start with our representative from Fundacion Amano Manava. Yes, and I'm very happy to be here speaking on behalf of this wonderful program. They are very thankful for this award. Um, I think the essential message to actually leave with you and is that Amano Manaba works towards maintaining the library they created in Ecuador, in a northern fish village, and uh, alive as a living space, as a, a safe haven for children, adults in the community, and as well as a space of continuous learning and skills sharing. I'm going to explain a little bit. A mano in Spanish has the meaning of to be even, to be square. So Manabas are the people from this region of Manabe. And uh, so the, the, the Manabas are very proud people that when they receive something, they want to give back. So a mano Manaba wants to continue this tradition of giving and receiving. And um, so Amano Manaba started as a biblio bureau, as a donkey library, in 2016. It attends the community, and it also focuses on girls on the age of 10, 12, because they believe them to be the engine of changing in a traditional party, patriarchal society. So, um, Okay, let me see. I can do that. No, this one. All right. Amano Manaba is located in Don Juan. It's a northern fishing village in the region of Manabi, Ecuador. So Ruth and Esteban, who are the founders, visited Don Juan in 2012. Then, they, they, at that time, they were professors at uh, the University of Virginia Colleges at WISE, and they were there to just do research, some, some, uh, some of their work. They wanted a place that they could really concentrate it. They fell in love with the place, and then, but they came back, and to make the story short, in 2016, they moved it to Don Juan. They left their tenure positions and moved to Don Juan. And soon after, uh, they, they moved in March 2016. They had built a house, an earthquake hit, and uh, left a lot of people homeless. These numbers you see here, they reflect the entire region because the city of Don Juan has only 300 families. So in the midst of all this devastation, they took their uh, donkey, uh, Domingo, his name, and uh, to the beach, when filled the pannier with books, and then they, they, they had a little bell, and the kids came, and they sat, they read, and then Domingo started taking books to the provincial school and homes around. So from 2016, um, the library was formed. They received a land donation with someone who actually lived in the area, and they had moved and donated the land. And they started the Amano Manaba. They legalized it as an NGO. And they, started, they received financial support, built the library, and uh, last year, it's really, they worked with the families around, not only in Don Juan, but also in nearby villages. And uh, 2019, this award is really something that they are very happy with. And this is a picture of the library. They constructed it, um, and uh, there are three librarians there at the moment, uh, and I'll show you their um, who they are, and uh, they and these are the resources that they have in the library. These are some pro of the programs they offer um, for the children in Don Juan and also in nearby villages. 
Um, I can tell you the remedial reading, one of the things is that the Equatorian system uh, puts children according to their ages, not with the, you know, the, the, their literacy in, the gra in particular grades. So some of the kids who are eight years old, that, but they didn't know how to read. So they have been providing some of that work within the school. And uh, in this also, the library, as I mentioned, is uh, they want to do it as a living space. So they, they, they promote a lot of uh, programs for the people in the community in the library. And in this picture, in fact, you see it's, uh, this woman in the center. She is a graduate student at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. She is doing research on gender dynamics in the region. Oh, this is a picture of uh, one of the projects uh, a day in, in the library in connection with schools, uh, the school in Don Juan and in nearby village, the children visit the library with the teachers and the teacher and the librarians then work together to expand on a particular subject that would be of interest to them. And these are the founders, uh, Ruth and Esteban. Ale Kuzmi is the president of uh, Amanomanaba. Miriam Rivers is one of the librarians together with Ruth and Esteban. And they are all from Ecuador. Uh, Ruth and, and um, Esteban also are American citizens. Oh, this is a sample of one of the work done with an international volunteer, a Taiwanese artist uh, who built this story of the earthquake with the kids and the beach and then painted this mural. You are only seeing one small part of it. And this is the contact information. If you have any questions that I can answer on their behalf, I'll be glad to. Let's move on. We're going to my homeland, Minnesota, and learn about the Minnesota Literacy Council from Debbie Cushman. Thank you. It's, it's truly a thrill to be here. We are coming up on 45 years old as an agency, so we've been around for a while. And I was looking at some of the websites um, of the other award winners, and I think many of us have mission statements that come out of the old law bach um, language around education, communi community building, and advocacy. Um, we actually have a portrait of Frank, a black and white portrait of Frank Laubach. It's called Ballpark Frank because he acquired a ball hat at some point. Um, it's very affectionate, and Ballpark Frank moves around from office to office. So. He uh, reminds us where we came from. Our executive director, Eric Nesheim, is my boss, and he's been at our agency for 29 years. Um, our training director just had his 30th anniversary, so we've got a lot of long, uh, long-standing folks there. We didn't have a 30th uh, anniversary service award, so he asked for a car, um, but he did not get a car. So. <laughs> Um, but Eric is credited with frequently talking about how illiteracy is a solvable social challenge. We know how to do this work, we just don't have enough resources to do it. Uh, in coming up with only 10 slides, which was a challenge, I removed a few that might be helpful for you to think about the way we're organized, but I do have a Venn diagram later that I'll show you um, about the work that we do. So we, about half of what we do is direct service both in the Twin Cities and statewide. And the other half of what we do is capacity building around supporting other agencies and doing the literacy work that they do. Um, selected programs that I put on here. So I, we discovered that some of our programs have logos and some of them do not. Uh, our Open Door Learning Center is our direct service arm. We teach about 2,500 adult students each year in the metro. We're one of just 320 literacy programs in Minnesota. So we do our own classroom work. Um, every program you can think of for adults from um, pre-literate learners all the way to GED. We are an AmeriCorps VISTA sponsor, so I'll be shifting my attentions tomorrow to national service because there's a transformation plan. Some of you may know about, we're trying to get that to stop. Um, we are an over 30-year sponsor of AmeriCorps VISTA in Minnesota. 
We have about 100 members who serve every year. And then North Star Digital Literacy Assessment. How many of you are using that assessment right now in your programs? So yeah, um, we actually, just as of last week, we are officially now in all 50 states with North Star um, and four English-speaking countries, which is pretty cool. Um, I get to see the North Star, like the, the hive, the brain trust of people. Like they often meet at our building um, in there working on those modules. Uh, we passed three million assessments, I think, at the end of 2018. So. Um, and in the lower uh, row there, you'll see Journeys. That's our anthology of adult student writing. Um, there's a copy in the back. Uh, 2019 is our 30th anniversary of that anthology, so we're getting pretty excited. And it makes it a little easier to write grants because funders like to hear things like the word anniversary. Um, so we're going to play that game, and we're going to uh, hopefully do some fancy things with the 30th anniversary. Because I'm on this panel, I thought I would focus on our multi-generational programs, um, and we have three. Um, I was trying to add up sort of, you know, if you had to put our, our dollars in the adult bucket versus youth bucket, I think we're probably about 70-30. I took a look at that this morning. We do a lot of work with adults and supporting adult literacy, but we do lots of multi-generational things too. So we have an open door preschool. We have one preschool. Kids are actually really, really fun to raise money for because they're cuter than most adults. Um, and they do really cool things and say crazy stuff. Um, so these parents and kids are co-enrolled at the same time, 20 hours a week. Uh, it's four hours a day, five days a week. Um, happy to talk at length about funding. So early childhood dollars were here and then they sort of went away and maybe they're coming back. Um, Part of the reason we keep the preschool open is that we're co-located in a Lutheran church and that congregation has come to the table and they pay for about half of our school. We are waitlisted and we have 18 students in the preschool right now. Our family literacy program uh, is called Everybody Reads and it's an incentive program so you get points um, for reading every day. And then if you read for the whole week, you get bonus points, and then the parents can cash those in for prizes. Uh, most of the goods are donated or from Goodwill. We have a super volunteer. We have many super volunteers. But this program is managed and um, maintained by a super volunteer at that site who checks in every Wednesday with families and gives out those prizes. And then our parenting classes. So this is a huge triumph um, that it is now OK for us to do adult literacy instruction in native languages and the hours count. <laughs> so thank you to anyone who had a hand in making that possible. Um, so we are now doing parenting classes not only in English but also in Somali, um, particularly at our Northside Learning Center. Um, that class is waitlisted. It's a familiar theme here today. Uh, we cover all kinds of topics like how to, um, how to plan for a student-teacher conference at school. Um, what about immunization records? Um, what happens when you have to look for middle school um, with school choice, right? So it's just an overwhelming amount of topics. And these are some groovy maps uh, that show kind of where we work. So we, um, we work in three places. We do work in the metro in Minneapolis, St. Paul, again, with our direct service, our preschool, our, our family literacy. Um, we also work regionally, and that's where I've had the great pleasure of meeting a whole bunch of rural librarians. Um, in North Dakota, uh, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. We had a special project recently on that. And then, of course, North Star is uh, national. We're at all the conferences. Uh, many people are looking forward to um, San Diego. This is coming up. And uh, COABE is, is another place we show up a lot, too. So one of the things that's kind of weird about us, um, like in a good way, I guess, is that we do have credentialed instructors teaching our um, adult literacy classes, but we have many more hours of instruction delivered by volunteers. And we see basically the same level gains. Um, there's no discernible difference in the outcomes between those programs. Um, and part of the reason we do this is that we believe so much um, in both models, and we teach both models, so we want to actually have the petri dish of doing it ourselves. And volunteers and teachers work peacefully together um, to make this all happen. Uh, as an agency, we have about 500 volunteers of our own, and there are about 6,000 literacy volunteers statewide in Minnesota. It's a little diagram we've been using lately to think about how we pilot new programming. Um, 
We have recently refreshed our equity framework to think about who's going to be affected by these decisions, who would be left out, who would be included. Um, and then after that, we run listening sessions with those stakeholders um, to gather feedback about how it's going. And the last best practice I wanted to highlight is that, is that we do what we teach and we teach what we do, if that makes sense. I couldn't think of a good way to say this on one slide. Um, but for example, our training director trains hundreds of children's literacy tutors each year, but he also volunteers in our preschool every Thursday morning. And he almost always has a cold. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that's the best practice for him to be there, but, uh, but it really... <laughs> I think he blames the kids. You know, um, Rob Palasek, who's our training director, he always uh, talks about cool points and how, um, especially putting men in a classroom, especially um, with younger kids, you have like automatic cool points. And I think they love to um, climb all over him and touch his head. So I think this is my last slide with facts on it. I'll just let those pop up. Uh, we have... Uh, that number there, the 11,000, we've accidentally become sort of a, a distributor of free books. Um, we do run a drive, but we've also become known around town as the guy who will take all of your free books when your kids go to college and you're finally cleaning out their rooms. So um, my fabulous colleague is just, I almost always see her in this shape, pushing a dolly of books. And uh, we get lots of books out in the community that way. Thank you so much. This is my contact info. I'm happy to answer any questions the rest of the day. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Karamba Iwandori, and I'm here on behalf of Muhuza Rwanda, who could not be here today. Today, I have the privilege to study in the United States. At one point in my life, I could not imagine myself where I am today. Muhuza Rwanda is an organization making the very dream I had the dream to get an education, a reality for many Rwandan children. But many dreams start small. In fact, thanks to the work of Muhuza, a child's dream of becoming literate can start in a village. Muhuza is a Rwandan non-governmental organization that was founded in 2005. The organization aims to foster a culture of peace through educating children and their parents to promote peace education, a culture of reading, and improve childhood development to create educated citizens all throughout Rwanda. In order to, in order to promote this culture, Muhuza's programs, including peace education, family literacy, community economic empowerment, and organizational capacity development. In administering these programs, Muhuza is able to work countrywide with its focus on fostering programs starting at the lowest community levels. Some of the best practices to improve literacy that Muhuza has used is the use of community assets like local conference halls, schools, and other resources. This helped to provide space for creating reading clubs and school literacy programs. These reading clubs are established in collaborations with other organizations like Save the Children, and were established in other collaboration with Save the Children, and these, they have continued to serve participants of all ages. With this, the organization is able to facilitate and train local volunteers for these clubs who continue to help and sustain the growth and development of the initiatives. Parental involvement is also highly encouraged in this program, thereby facilitating the transition to a culture of reading in communities. Umuhuza also takes advantage of Rwanda's high school graduate program's community service by recruiting students as volunteers to help spread the word and help with mobilization. Furthermore, savings groups among parents, volunteers, and other participants have continued to encourage the growth and sustainability of literacy programs. Not only is it a form of income generation, Savings groups help to improve, increase the number of books in circulation and help establish their new reading clubs in other communities. Some of the lessons that they were able to learn was that they observed that gaining support and encouragement from local leaders helps the implemented programs to reach more people and in a much faster way. Working through existing local structures was also observed as a platform that the organization implemented to help generate sustainability. 
During my internship, I was able to experience many of these uh, the programs that Umuhuza has. I was able to sit in on a reading session, and I was able to see the joy and excitement on the kids' faces as they were being read to. I witnessed a number of couples legally get married, and this allowed for their children to be legally recognized as dependents, thus better equipping Umuhuza with the accurate population data to respond to the needs of the communities. Positive parenting education Positive parenting education was also among the many programs that contributed to the cultural shift towards and the acceptance of a reading culture. I was truly blessed to have been a witness of the work Muhuza does and is doing in my home country, Rwanda. My two-month internship with them helped remind me of the difficult history that we experience as a country, yet Rwanda has been and is being transformed by the diligent work of many organizations like Umuhuza. As they say in our native language, thank you very much. <laughs>